right, so um, let's get started. What we're going to try to do is just do it as fast as we can. That way, you know, we can just make it more of a learning process. So right now I'm in Sonar 8 Producer Edition, and I've got the main screen, screen comes up. When you um, open up Sonar, you get a quick start screen right here, which is really cool. You can either open a recent project, or you can open a new, you can go, and this will, um, this will list actually like the last 10 projects that you've been working on. Um, you can open a new project and dig a little bit deeper, or you can create a new project. Right now we're going to create a new project. Bam. And then right here it gives you a screen. Um, it says location. That's where it goes. So this is going to my one of my hard drives. Okay, what projects? It says. And then there's also um, a path for the audio. So Cakewalk projects and audio. Um, and then right here it's on normal. There's all kinds of little templates and stuff you can use, but I don't use templates because I just like to start with a blank slate. All right. So right now uh, we're gonna name this the YouTube song put it in all cap YouTube song alright so we name it the YouTube song and what it does is it creates a folder and everything for your project calls a YouTube song so it creates it on your whatever drive that you want and you can change that in settings and then it makes audio files for you and everything then bam it goes open so right here uh, this is just the blank slate right here and I just how I like to have it because whenever you start an audio track or you start a, a MIDI track, um, uh, it creates the, the the track on the page for you, so you don't have to worry about that. So right now, um, when I usually start out, you, there's different schools of thought. Some people like to start out just playing. Some people like to start with loops. Some people start with drums. Me, I like to start with melody. And if I don't have a melody on my head anymore, right at the moment, then I'll look for inspiration. There's a little folder right here, um, up in the on the upper tool um, on the upper toolbar. It's called Loop Explorer View. So we're just going to start with a loop because we want it to be easy. We want it to be really easy, and we want to show you how to make a song and make it be really easy. So if you click that little folder, it opens up to a spot where I have you know all my loops, and you have to have your own loops. Um, I think Sonar does come with loops itself. You know what I mean? But if you have loops, that's better for you. If you don't have loops, I'm going to show you how you can just start out making a song yourself. What's cool about Loop Explorer View is that you can um, basically audition any loops that you have. And so we're going to, that's what we're going to do right now. like those because uh, they're kind of whack you know this is like a this is something that I downloaded what we're gonna do is go to Sony I got a um, I got a lot of Sony acid loops that I want to go to so we're gonna check those out and we're gonna go <laughs> Okay, right now, so we're not trying to, I'm not trying to make an amazing song. I'm just trying to give you an idea, I, you know, how to do it. So we want to just kind of hurry, I just want to kind of hurry up and show you how to get through it. So I'm just going to pick these two loops. Um, they're uh, arpeggio loops, and I got them from Sony. And one's playing a G, uh, a, one's playing a G loop, and one's playing a C loop. So all you gotta do to put those on your track is go is press uh is double click it and then it'll put it on your track view for you and then I'm gonna double click this other one too. So, bam. so now I have two loops. So now I'm gonna close Loop Explorer and then you get this screen right here and it's got the loop. It's only showing one loop because since you created one of the loops created a track which was track one as you can see, okay. And then the other one is sitting on top of it. So what you got to do is either you can pull this down 
you can pull one of them down and it'll create two tracks or you can pull it to the side so if you go right here you see I just slid it over now there's two loops and then I play <laughs> For me, that's not fast enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here to um, there's a temp there's another tempo toolbar. I'm gonna go right here, and since most of the joints that we hear are, are a lot faster than that, I'm gonna probably put it at. I don't want to do one too fast because I've been writing a lot of songs at 120 and 130, but I think I'm gonna go to like 110 or maybe 109, and that's all you gotta do to change the tempo. Just just right in this toolbar, you just change the tempo. Now. For me, these loops are too, there's not enough change in them. So I'm going to find the portions of these loops that I like, probably the first half and then the second half of that, and then I'll put them together. So in order to go to the beginning without using the mouse, you just press W, bam, and then you press the space bar to play. Okay, so I already know I like that portion of the loop. So what I, what I do now is on this loop is I go right here and it's blue. There's a blue line showing that you can expand it or lower it and also these corners of these audio tracks are kind of cut off making it look more round okay that means that it's loops now you could right click that and go to groove uh, groove clip looping and you could just turn it into a regular loop and that will actually play it at the speed that it was meant to play at now now um, it's supposed to be these loops are four bars and so this is a little shorter, it's like four and a half, which means that I don't have the right tempo. Now I can go back and change the tempo until this bar gets into the, to the five, and that'll actually tell me what speed it was actually at. And so, which means that the original speed was actually 120, okay? So I just changed the tempo to 120. Now if you go right here, instead of right clicking, you can press Control L, which will loop it, which will create the loop again, all right? Now again, we didn't like the whole four bars, but we did like the first two bars, right? All right, so now I'm gonna take this other loop and I'm gonna slide it over, okay? But I didn't like the first half of this loop. I don't like that sound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna wait till I get the blue line right across here and I'm gonna shorten it to two bars. And what's cool is there's a grid button on there and that keeps everything in time so that you don't have to worry about making sure each one of these are at the right time. Okay, so now I got that, and then I slide it over. Ooh, I think my dog pooted. Okay, so these, these are the same key. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted two different keys. I wanted a G and a C. So I'm going to go back to Loop Explorer. And I'm going to try to find it. Okay. So now I found it. I'm going to get that back. And then I'm going to close Loop Explorer again. Okay, so this one should be it. Let me see. So if we go right here. So now we press W, go back. And then 